Hello, my viewers and followers. Thank you for tuning in again for another reading of the Imitation of Christ. Today, from beautiful location from the mountains, I did take another mountain hike, and so I'm taking you along with me. So let's start with the 24th chapter. We're actually almost done. Uh, with book one of the Imitation of Christ, there are actually three books. And the first book, it says, Thoughtful, Helpful Thoughts on Life of the Soul. So this is where we are at. And let's start the reading. In all things, consider the end, how you shall stand before the strict judge, from whom nothing is hidden, and who will pronounce judgment in all justice accepting neither bribes nor excuses. And you miserable and wretched sinner who fear even the countenance of an angry man, what answer will you make to God who knows all of your sins? Why do you not provide for yourself against the day of judgment when no man can be excused or defended by another? Lost my way. Just excused or defended by another because each will have enough to do to answer for himself. In this life, your work is profitable, your tears acceptable, your sighs audible, your sorrows satisfying and purifying. The patient man goes through a great salutary purgatory when he grieves more over the malice of one who harms him than for his own injury. When he prays readily for his enemies and forgives offenses from his heart, when he does not hesitate to ask pardon of others, when he is more easily moved to pity than to anger, when he does frequent violence to himself and tries to bring the body into complete subjection to the spirit. It is better to atone for sin now and to cut away vices than to keep them for purgation in the thereafter. In truth, we deceive ourselves by our ill-advised love of the flesh. What will that fire feed upon but our sins? The more we spare ourselves now and the more we satisfy the flesh, the harder will be reckoning be, and the more we keep for the burning. For a man will be more grievously punished in the things in which he has sinned. There the lazy will be driven with burning prongs and gluten's torments, with unspeakable hunger and thirst. The wanton and lust-loving will be bathed in burning pitch and foul brimstone. The envious will howl in their grief like mad dogs. Every vice will have its own proper punishment. The proud will be faced with every confusion and the avaricious pinched with the most abject want. One hour of suffering there will be more bitter than a hundred years of the most severe penance here. In this life, men sometimes rest from work and enjoy the comfort of friends, but the damned have no rest or consolation. You must therefore take care and repent of your sins now, so that on the day of judgment you may rest secure with the blessed. For on that day, the dust will stand firm against those who tortured and oppressed them. And he who now submits humbly to the judgment of men will arise to pass judgment upon them. The poor and humble will have arise to pass judgment upon them. And the poor and humble will have great confidence while the proud will be struck by fear. He who learned to be a fool in this world and to be scorned for Christ will then appear to have been wise. In that day, every trial born in patience will be pleasing and the voice of iniquity will be stilled. The devout will be glad and the irreligious will mourn and the mortified body will rejoice far more than if it had been pampered with every pleasure. Then the cheap garment will shine with splendor and the rich one become faded and worn. The poor cottage will be more praised than the gilded palace. In that day, pers persevering patience will count more than all the power in this world. 
Simply obedient will be exalted above all worldly cleverness. A good and clean conscience will gladden the heart of a man far more than the philosophy of the learned and the contempt for riches will be of more weight than every treasure on earth. Then you will find more consolation in having prayed devoutly than in having fared daintily. You will be happy that you preferred silence to prolonged gossip. Then holy works will be of greater value than many fair works. Strictness of life and hard penances will be more pleasing than all earthly delights. Learn then to suffer little things now that you may not have to suffer greater ones in eternity. Prove here what you can bear the hereafter. If you can suffer only a little now, how will you be able to endure eternal torment? If a little suffering makes you impatient now, what will hellfire do? In truth, you cannot have two joys. In truth, you cannot have two joys. You cannot taste the pleasures of this world and afterward reign with Christ. If your life to this moment had been full of honors and pleasures, what good would it do if at this instant you should die? All is vanity, therefore, except to love God and to serve Him alone. He who loves God will all his heart does not fear death or punishment or judgment or hell because perfect love assures access to God. It is no wonder that he who will delight in sin fears death and judgment. It is good, however, that even if love does not as yet restrain you from evil, at least the fear of hell does. The man who casts aside the fear of God cannot continue long in goodness, but will quickly fall into the snares of the devil. So this was a kind of difficult, even to read a difficult chapter, but all in all, it just shows you that if you learn to endure your trials, your problems, challenges here in life, then whatever you will face after this life will be easier because if you want to go to heaven and to live with God in heaven, you need to be pure and you can purify yourself in this life or in the life after this life. And this is called purgatory. So it's like a fire burning away all your filth, your sins, whatever you haven't let go, you're still attached to that needs to be burned away to clean you. If you even are on God's side, of course. Otherwise, if you haven't even chosen God, then of course there will be no redemption for you. There is hellfire waiting for you. And that's just the truth. I mean, I can sweet talk it, but it won't help you. You have two choices. You either are for God and not for God. And if you choose God, but you are not taking with patience and growing in virtues here in life through the problems and the challenges and you grow in your spiritual life then you will have to do that after you die you will have to go through a phase that will be more difficult than your challenges now to cleanse you so it is easier here on earth to go through the trials to grow in patience and virtue and overcome your attachment, your desires, your wishes, your vices, in order to become free of them. Here on earth, it's easier. It's a lot less painful than in the life afterwards. So, it is something to think about. How do you deal with the problems you're faced with? Are you angry and impatient and you just want your other circumstances to be perfect? I'm sorry, there's news here. It's not gonna happen. We all are gonna face challenges, no matter if you're walking with God or you're not. But our suffering is not in vain. That's the difference. 
You can use it as a springboard to grow in virtue to become better. It's not just wasted suffering. It actually is a springboard to be become better. You know, a lot of in the old days there were martyrs, martyrs who went to death so joyfully because they knew they knew it wasn't in vain. They could smile and be happy about it because they knew that suffering will end and they actually will go to God and be rewarded. So take your little challenges that you're facing now and they might be huge for you in this life and I understand there's many, many, many hardships, but it will be easier to overcome them here and now. I hope I see you again very soon for the next and actually the last reading of the first book of the Imitation of Christ, which has three books. God bless you.